Thank you, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. Thank you for joining us. Um, just a quick note that um, we, we will be going through our full agenda. Um, I apologize to those who had hoped to attend an in-person meeting, but it was decided that we would go virtual this evening. Um, we felt it was the best thing to do with everything that's been happening. Um, and so, welcome. I'm going to start with tonight's Pledge of Allegiance. I apologize that I can't stand, but I had torn my back out today, but I'm still going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United um, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And just to make a correction, it was yesterday that I hurt my back doing work. Uh, so tonight there will not be a hearing at privilege of the floor, and I apologize for that. However, as I've mentioned before, if you send a email to the um, superintendent's office or to the whole board of education. We will try to answer that as soon as possible. Um, if it's not something that can be answered directly in an email, we will try to address it at our next board of education meeting. Um, thank you. Um, I'm next going to move over to the superintendent's comments and ask Superintendent Schwartz to give us her update. Thank you, Dave. As uh, you may be aware, especially uh, folks with children still at school, uh, we have just wrapped up our survey of parents uh, K-12 um, looking for learning preferences as we move forward. So you could be an in-person student who wants to come back full time. You could be, I'm sorry, who wants to go virtual. You could be a virtual student who wants to come back in person. And we are putting that data together and preparing for those moves. Um, I look very preliminarily at the data. We have a few more students looking to go um, out at the high school. Um, we have some number of students, and interestingly, many of them um, students with special needs who are looking to come in. Uh, we are working to make sure that our neediest learners, particularly if they have, had chosen virtual, um, realize they have an opportunity to come in for instruction. That's both uh, elementary, middle, and high school, all three, three levels. So that process is well underway. Uh, we are working through that. Um, and I don't think it's going to uh, change our content position in terms of the number of students opting for in-person and the number of students opting for fully virtual a great deal. But of course, once I have those numbers, I will share them with the board. I also want to chat just very briefly about our two uh, positive COVID cases. Um, there seems to be a little bit of confusion, perhaps even among the board, um, thinking that uh, the moment we know as a district or think we know that we have a positive case, that we are going to put that information out. I want to remind you that we are working very closely with the Schenectady County Public Health Department and who are working with New York State Department of Health. We don't put any information out, particularly about positive cases, until we have a confirmed positive case. Um, and by confirmed, I mean the DOH has notified public health who notified me or public health and I have a conversation and we have the same information about a case. Um, had I done that, I would have reported a positive case that it turns out was not a positive case. So I would ask people, I've had people say, well, if the um, Public health uh, notifies you that you might have a case on 1031. Why does it take you to 11, uh, the 
November 5th to report that case because we have to wait for official confirmation that there is a case. Um, so I would want folks to understand the timing is actually very tight, but it's not dictated solely by whatever we think we know in the school district. We are part of a much bigger machine that is um, handling that data. So the two positive cases we had that showed up on our dashboard that we didn't know about, um, if you've been checking our dashboard, are still there. And we have two positive cases attributable to an elementary school. Those cases are also showing there. I would just remind you also that there's a window of time during which I report our data daily. So um, if I don't find out about a positive case until, say, Thursday night of last week, the data dashboard has already locked. So I can't go back in and post that case. I, in fact, posted that case the next day because at 4 p.m. sharp, the data dashboard locks down and whatever you put in is what goes in. So I would want you to be aware of that. I would also want you to know that we are not communicating about COVID on Facebook. Uh, we may put information on Facebook that says something like second will reopen on Monday, but Facebook is not our primary means of communication. In fact, it's not a means that we typically use to communicate. Um, what we use is the district's website. That is our official communication place. And then the school notifier to let people know they should check their email and or check our website. And that's where the official information is. And finally, um, I think there is some desire for not only a report of the positive case, but who has a positive case, who that individual is. And I would simply remind you that HIPAA prohibits us from talking about actual individuals and whether or not they test positive. Now, I am aware that um, some individuals, or at least one perhaps, involved in last week's exclusions, then chose to post on their Facebook page that they had tested negative. That's fine. People can report whatever they would like on their Facebook page. But I want to remind you that that is not our role to share people's names or healthcare information. And that is not going to happen. Uh, I'm also not going to share it with you, the board, in terms of the actual individuals, because you are not entitled to people's health information either by virtue of being board members. So I will share with you exactly the types of information I've been sharing with you. And I would just encourage you, if you have questions about the way we are communicating, to please address them today, bring them to me, or ask for an opportunity to have that discussion. Um, from what I am hearing, people have been pleased with the way we are communicating, by and large. Not perfect, but by and large. And finally, I think the last thing I will say is those cases we report on the COVID dashboard, I don't know how long they stay on the dashboard. Um, they don't seem to uh, go away at some point. Um, they just seem to be there. And I'm only saying that because I know the first two cases, the people I don't know who they were, um, that are reported in as part of our zip code um, as having COVID between the ages of five and 17, those cases are still there. And one of them is, way, is uh, at least two weeks old, if not older. So I don't exactly know how that part of that works. Um, we will continue to see. And finally, um, I would uh, just want to say I appreciate um, that folks are um, interested and want to know, um, have questions about COVID. Uh, and to that end, Dave and I are talking about a town hall meeting uh, probably next week, but that we would invite both Schenectady Public Health to have a and our school physicians to have someone there if they chose. 
And actually, I'm not done because the last thing I'm going to say is the governor announced today that we will have guidance on winter sports in November, early November. I'm thinking we're there. Um, so what I'm hearing is we should uh, potentially know something about that by the end of this week or early next week. And of course, I'll share that information as soon as we have it. That does it for me, Dave. Thank you. Well, Susan, I can add one little bit. The New York State, whatever, Public High School Athletic Association gave their recommendations tonight as to what they believe should be open. Bowling, gym, indoor track and field, skiing and swimming and diving. That's what they identified as low, um, moderate to low risk sports. Well, let's see what the governor says. Yes, and I would just remind folks that because um, we are part of Foothills, um, we already swam. We That was one of our low-risk sports in the first round. Uh, the Foothills superintendents and ADs, athletic directors, are planning to meet as soon as the guidance is out um, to talk about what will happen within our league. Um, but again, we'll let you know as soon as we know that. And thank you, Dave, because I hadn't seen that. It just literally, my referee, uh, the head of the referee association, literally just sent it to me as you were talking. Um, Timing is everything. Yeah. And I just wanted to say thank you to the to all the board members who had asked about this public um, having a you know a public um, here not a hearing but. A town hall again. I know a number of you had thought that would be a good idea, and I, you know, I, I agree. I hope we all can make it. Um, we had thought about this week, but I know there's a training going on, and I, I didn't want anybody to have to miss it because they, they wanted to be in a training as well. So, um, I, I think that's going to be very helpful. Do folks have questions for superintendent? Everybody's quiet today. Oh, okay. If that, I, think, we'll... I think we could say thank you to, to Susan and our staff for doing such a great job, really taking the time and really working 24 hours a day. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tim. So next on the agenda is to designate Metropolitan Commercial Bank as an additional official depository. Um, can I get a motion? I'll motion to approve the designation of Metropolitan Commercial Bank as an additional official depository for the deposit of all monies received by the school district. Rick, that was you, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> it's a little hard on this to, to see whose mouth is moving. Um, I'll second. Thank you, Hal. Drew or any Drew or um, Susan, did you want to add anything here or? I'm going to turn it over to Drew. Okay. I sent you the backup of the basis for this decision, and, and they also support that it's part of education law. It's approved. And what this does, Rick had a good question about the insurance part of this. As you all know, um, the FDIC limit is $250,000 per deposit. The structure lays out among various banks so that everybody picks up a share of this so we can put unlimited money. The same kind of range that we have in New York class, but their rates have fallen to almost 0%. This allows us to make up some money that we're losing on interest income, and it's all approved by um, State Education Department um, Education Law. Provided those materials, and highlighted those sections about the insurance. To cover our investment. So, are there any questions on that? I'd be glad to answer them. Yeah. Rick, did I answer your question? Are you set with that one? I mean, you can ask more questions, obviously. Well, Drew responded that yes, we have the same coverage. Essentially, I just switching banks, we wanted to make sure that we we had the same coverage as we did before, and it sounds like that too. So, that was my, my main question. Oh, thank you. Good question. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? 
so moved. Thank you. Um, next is the resolution authorized participation in the co-op. There's two of these. Can I get a motion? I'll move that the school of Chicagoville Central School District participate in the cooperative energy purchasing services for natural gas and for electricity. Thank you, Kim. Can I'll I get second. a second? I'll second. Oh, you too. I should have figured that goes hand in hand there. <laughs> um, any questions about this? If not, uh, for Bobby's purposes, it was Pam and then um, Kim seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone abstain? <clears throat> Anyone against? No? Um, so moved. Next is the approve the resolution on the proposed action of the Environmental Quality Review Act. Can I get a motion? I'll motion to approve the resolution determining the proposal acting a type two action for the purpose of the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act for building and site improvements for said school district. Thank you, Kim. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Um, are there any questions on this? Just a comment on the uh, the copy. It sounds like Drew Diane was taking care of the one typo. Yes, it's been corrected on our end, Rick, and I think it came as part of your um, addendum. Yeah, Rick, it's it's in our email addendum email. Very Thanks awesome. for catching that. If you don't have that, let me know, and I'll make sure it gets sent to you. But it looks like everybody got sent the, the revised version. Thank you for catching that. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Anyone abstain? So move. Thank you. Next is the resolution to adopt the uh, proposition to be presented to the voters. I'd like to um, approve the resolution dated November 9th, 2020. Thank you. Rick. To be presented to the voters at the annual district meeting on May 18th, 2021. Thank you, Rick. Second. Can I get a second? Second. How was that you? Yes, sir. Thank you, Hal. Um, Drew, did you want to say anything about this or? So what you've done tonight is you've approved the uh, environmental impact, which there isn't any, um, so our type two. And now this allows us to put on the May separate proposition from the annual budget, um, the right to bond $12.8 million for the aforementioned capital project and defines what we're going to do broadly in, in the and, and Drew, I just wanted to ask we um we're able to make minor changes within this right as long as we're staying within within the general purpose of the funds. Right. We we can go out and put more fields in. Um you know there's 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 limits you have you have to do certain types of work to generate the aid based on building level units and so forth. Yes. It's not so tight that we can't put a brick over here rather than there. So that's a good point, Dave. Um, but nothing major. We couldn't put another school, build another school, in other words. Um, if we could build a school for that cost. Or vegetables, right? Dave. Yeah. So good question, Dave. Any questions? Sorry, I jumped in first. I don't hear any, so I'll ask um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. So moved. Okay. I'm hearing things. I'm not sure I'm hearing somebody saying something with noise. Sorry. Um, next is communication. 
I'll move communications A through C, staffing one through 13, placement of students with disabilities, and the minutes of the regular meetings on October 5th and October 26th as submitted. I'll second. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Kim. There were some questions on this earlier. Um, are there any questions now? Did all the questions get answered or? Yeah, my, my questions were answered. Um, being that I have the floor though, I'd like to add uh, under staffing number nine, uh, John, uh, his last name is tough to, to pronounce, I think, Goshener, perhaps. Did I do all right, Karen? <laughs> that was close. Pretty good. <laughs> um, I just want to compliment him. I've actually had a couple interactions because my son has a class with him. Fantastic job. So if you could pass that forward to him, um, he is doing a great job. So thank you. Good. Thank you for letting us know. Any other questions? Thanks, Rick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? So moved. Next is the budget transfers for June. Do we have any questions on those transfers? Oh, we seem to have a lot of June, don't we? If there's no questions, we'll move those forward. Other business? Um, let me let me open up. I, would I, let me just get two things. Um, one is I'm hoping that at the next board meeting, those folks who attended the NISBA conference and would like to bring forward some of the things that they learned that might be beneficial to all the other um, board members, the sessions they went to, I'd love if you wouldn't mind doing a couple of minute, you know, presentation on that or um, just mention some of them because mostly everything's online and other folks could look it up. So um, if folks don't mind, next meeting we'll do that. Um, I, I was very happy to hear that we're going to try to go forward with the um, the public uh, town hall next week. I hope that we can um, let folks all know and and participate, all of us be able to at least be there to hear what folks are talking about. Um, and does anyone else have other business? Okay, I've done this, I've said this before, but I wanna say it like on the record here. Um, I think this board, you folks have done a great job. I'm very proud and happy to be a part of this group. Um, this is a very tough times we're going through, and and I really think that you know we're we're doing the best we all can. Uh, I include with that our administration and our administrative team. Um, this is like nothing else we've seen before. So hopefully, hopefully, the Pfizer um immunization will will work and we'll be able to get back to our normal lives sooner than later um if there's no other other business i will remind folks that there is no um hearing and privilege of the floor um please send any comments, remarks, questions you have into um, the school and it will be distributed to the board. Um, and with that, I will just remind folks that we will be doing a exec session next meeting. Um, I'm not sure we'll do six or 6.30. Let's see what else we might have on that exec session, but plan accordingly, we will 
be remote one more time um, next session. Um, and then I believe, Susan, does it end in the end of November? The authority? have another board meeting till after it had ended unless the governor extends it. Okay, so it'll be, that'll be our last um, remote meeting. And then we'll go back to seeing each other in person, which will be good. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? I will motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? I'll second Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is any, anyone opposed to adjourning? Is anyone going to abstain from adjourning? If not, have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. A very productive meeting tonight. I think it's um, very worthwhile. And thanks, everybody who participated online um, and listened into tonight and hopefully we'll we'll talk to you next week if things work out and from the board we'll see each other two weeks from tonight thanks everybody be safe all thank, thank you, you.